Welcome, Chef Adam Grafton. So happy to have you here. Great to be here, Tara. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, and you are a chef to watch, and you are a chef who is training other chefs, which I think is really great. And I wanted to go back to your beginning. Like you went to culinary school in Philadelphia, and I wonder, you've been with Morrison since the year 2000. So this, that was, it's hard to believe that was 21 years ago. And yeah. so this was even before that. So take us back to the time where you were a culinary student. Yeah, sure, Tara. So I went to the restaurant school of Philadelphia many, many years ago, it seems. Uh, but, you know, it was a great experience, uh, just like any uh, young chef starting out right now in culinary school, you know, words of wisdom or advice would be, you know, put in the time, uh, network, develop those relationships. Uh, you know, food is food is art uh, and, and there's right techniques and wrong techniques. Concentrate on the right techniques, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, but just cling on to those chefs that those instructors that you're, you look up to uh, that are that are teaching your classes. Uh, you know, it's it, it, that's what I did, Tara. I mean, I had several instructors in, in culinary school that for whatever reason, uh, I, I kind of I kind of looked up to. Mm -hmm. uh, great chefs, tons of talent, tons of experience, you know, on their resume. Uh, they had that passion for obviously teaching culinary arts uh, at, at culinary school. So, you know, looked up to them, learned a ton from them, uh, still stay connected after all the years. Um, That's cool. So just, yeah, yeah. And people have different styles of learning. So I would think that um, you would, different people gravitate towards different mentors that that they're looking for so it's is it is it intimidating at all to be in culinary school like your your first day is it kind of like right it is you know it's different especially if you're going into culinary school without um stepping into a kitchen or a professional kitchen mm -hmm. uh you know i started out as a dishwasher pot washer all those years ago and you know just i'm sure that any any culinarians listening to this uh right now would agree mm -hmm. you know you you start out with in the dish room and, and you know all of a sudden cook called out so it becomes hey adam <laughs> uh need you to come in and help, and help prep and and picked up a knife learned the hard way yeah uh, all those years ago but uh for, for for whatever reason i was just called into being around food and you know i guess tara the the biggest thing that that happened to me is you know in terms of this is my calling this is what i want to do it's just the first time i put out a dish um and and heard from the guests and the customers about how great it was to me that was the connection with food and, and people and hospitality industry so uh, that was my calling yes i i love that aha moment that's that's really cool like to be able to to remember that and to know and to keep that with you and now in your role as vp of culinary with morrison living you are um helping to continue this kind of tradition of mentorship and you're doing a culinary advancement training series morrison is partnering with the cia um which most of our listeners will know is the the culinary institute of america i had to convince my mom a couple times that i wasn't a spy i was like i'm going off to the cia see you later and she's like oh my gosh what's happening here and then when i went to the nra show it was even worse she was like we don't believe in guns i was like no no it's the other nra <laughs> So anyway, um, the CIA Pro Chef Mentor Program, where they um, train train chefs, where they can in turn train culinarians to to get yeah. new skill sets, new confidence. So tell us about um, first. Let's I, the culinary advancement training series. Let's talk about that first. Sure. Yeah, sure. So we we launched it in January of uh, twenty one. Uh, it was a, it was definitely a dream of ours. So when I say um, us, it was really uh, myself and the remainder of the uh, culinary leadership team for Mars and Living. So I've got an awesome team of senior corporate executive chefs, corporate executive chefs, regional chefs, and just naturally, you know, as I mentioned earlier, just my experience in culinary school as a chef, you you really become a mentor naturally, mm -hmm. and, and you become that chef in the kitchen that's constantly teaching and showing. Uh, and that's that's the gratification that you get as a chef, you know, just being in the kitchen, showing showing folks the right way versus the wrong way, seeing the end product and and feeling really good about yourself at the end of the day that you help somebody and, and obviously progress in their career. So the culinary advancement training series, as I mentioned earlier, is just a dream of ours where, you know, for years we said, 
it would be great if we kind of grew our own people yeah. and our culinarians and, and how can we do that? And so we kind of mapped it out and said, well, we, we've got a great partnership with the Culinary Institute of America. Um, let's, let's actually build out a culinary class, you yeah. know, or, or, you know, a school, really it is. And so we looked at it and said, well, let's, <clears throat> let's go ahead and, and take full advantage of CIA's mentorship program. Let's start out by identifying the top 15 chefs across Morris and Living uh, that, that truly have that passion about becoming mentors. And that list is much greater than 15. Uh, right, right. There, are, there are chefs that, <laughs> oh. had, you know, there are chefs right now that are ready to go and become mentors uh, in, uh, in FY22 for us. Yeah. So we looked and said, let's, let's, get, let's grab 15 mentors and, and partner up with the Culinary Institute of America through the mentorship program. That took place uh, right before, uh, probably say November, mm -hmm. uh, right before we're gearing up for the official launch of Culinary Advancement Training Series in January. And then we went through a whole nomination process. So you can imagine, Tara, just the complexity here. Yeah. Uh, we operate uh, about 500 communities across the United States, oh, yeah. uh, 300 and plus, 300 plus chefs, sous chefs are in there, yeah. cooks, right? So the, the cool part here, Tara, was let's, the, let's, get, let's get to the mentors, get them connected with CIA, go through the mentorship. And at the same time, we were going through a whole nomination process across Mars and Living. And we ended up with 110 mentees or students. And that, make, that really make, makes up... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking through here, probably 65 uh, hourly frontline culinarians. So folks that are cooks that want to become sous chefs, yep. sous chefs that want to become executive chefs, and the remainder are executive chefs that are ready to become regional executive chefs or corporate executive chefs. Uh, so we got a pretty big class this year. And this is our first year, obviously. So it's, it's, I imagine it's going to grow for next year. Um, yeah. That is cool. And I think I think I saw that um, there was nominations, and then the people had to write essays too. So this is like really something where you're like, yes, I'm investing in myself. I'm interested in doing this. So you're looking for that commitment from people, kind of right in the beginning. It's like, do you want to do this? We'll help you do it, right? Yeah, it's that commitment and the passion. So the whole yeah. the whole idea of having that essay and the essays, uh, all of the mentees and mentors just did an amazing job. They they really spoke from their heart and, and the stories were incredible and touching at the same time. Yeah, I was going to say, what are some of the yeah. things that you, what, what were some of those things that you saw in the essays? So, you know, Tara, it was just examples and stories shared about, mm -hmm. hey, my, my parents owned a, a restaurant and, and it's no longer, you know, we're no longer in business. I want to stay in food service. I love cooking. I love, you know, kind of my story, like, examples sort of my story early on of just ha having that um you know gratification of just hearing guests say how much they love your food to uh you know I'm a, I'm a single parent I can't really afford right now to go to culinary school however I want to I want to grow my career just those sorts of stories that were just amazing uh yeah, and, and awesome. really touching that's really cool. Yeah, because people um, come into this field from all different starting points. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like, it's awesome that there's going to be somebody to look up to and somebody that can that can help them with that. So, um, and this year, there's 16 mentors and 115 students, I think I saw. So this is this is a good, good start, right? What are, yeah. um, how's it been going? Fantastic! Yeah, really fantastic. So the there we we operate off of a off of our portal, so a training portal with Pro Chef Series One. So the mentors obviously through that mentorship training understand Pro Chef Series One, um, learn how to uh, go through and assign assessments to the students. Students then have access to their portal. Uh, they'll go ahead and go in and follow through all the different lesson plans that are assigned by the mentors. So there's 22 lessons, uh, which makes up 150 different uh, video trainings and well over, I think it's well over 160 hours worth of training, Nice, which is amazing. But the real important part with the Culinary Advancement Training Series, as I mentioned earlier, was really about growing our own people. 
yes. and our own culinarians. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we took it further, Tara. What we did is we went ahead and created development plans for uh, each of the, pos the positions. Mm -hmm. We also created uh, curriculums based on hourly frontline and salary culinarians, which is a combination. Each curriculum is a combination of Morris and Living specific training programs to Compass uh, as we're a part of Compass family, there's some specific trainings on the Compass side to Food Finance 101, um, all the way through uh, some technical skills around systems and tools to operate in a in a Morrison Living Kitchen. Oh, so that really not only not, yeah, not, and Tara, not only are they working through the Pro Chef Series One, they're they're also working through to complete their curriculum and their development plan. And, and as I get on uh, mentor, uh, the mentor calls with yeah. their students, I always talk about the, the end goal in the future here, because mm -hmm. it's really about, the, as, as I mentioned, it's about developing them, but it's also taking it a step further with that promise of de not only developing them, but getting them into their next role. So we keep track. Yeah, Tara. So we keep track of if, if you were a cook, Tara, and your development plan is to become a sous chef, mm -hmm. we're asking you obviously where you reside now, would you like to relocate? Mm. So at the end of this, we'll have a master sort of um, emerging leaders list for culinarians. So then we start to look at as we're growing mm -hmm. and opening up communities across the country, we're also tapping shoulders of the, the culinary advancement training, training series students to let them know that there's a great opportunity here. You're ready. We've signed off on you. You've got all the training. So that's the end, that's the end goal. I really noticed that. I think that's a really important component of this is like this, the kind of clear path, because it's not like you're just sort of wondering like, oh, maybe someone will notice me. I'm, I'm diligently doing my work and I hope that I can move up. It's like, no, this is a, a set thing. It's like, you are an emerging leader. You're on this list. We are going to recognize you if you're going to put in the time for all this training. I think that's so cool. Yeah. And I think a long time ago, um, we did a story for food management. It was a feature. I wrote it and it was called like the balancing act. And it was the way that, and because an executive chef, not only, I mean, you're good at cooking, you're awesome in the kitchen, but it's like, it's a leadership role. Like you have to, I mean, there's so many other things. And like, you kind of touched on that with the purchasing. And so people who are already in the healthcare, the senior dining business, maybe it's not so much people who are just like, I, I just want to be creative. I, I want to do my own thing. It's like, maybe they have a better understanding of like that leadership aspect of it, I would think, because they're kind of seeing the way that it, that it all fits together in a different way than if you were just at an independent restaurant. For sure, Tara. I mean, what, what's always connected me to senior living all these years, and I've, I've gotten asked several times of, hey, Adam, did you ever think of going to the business industry side? I mean, there's just so many sectors within Compass Group. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm, I've always said, I'm, I love senior living, and there's a reason for that. As a chef in senior living, uh, especially in Morrison living, you have, uh, such a, you have such an ability to be creative. You know, it's uh -huh. your, your residents are your guests. It's mm -hmm. their home. Yeah. Uh, however, they they love the creativity from our chefs. So obviously we have menus that are uh, there uh, on a daily basis, but the creativity around just being able to play with food, create specials, uh, and our residents love it. That is really cool. And there's, I mean, there's just so much heart involved with it. It's like, I definitely have been covering all these different segments of on-site dining for a long time, but I do, I've always had a special interest in senior dining because it's, there's something about it and just, and also the memory care and that kind of stuff. And like, it just, it's really, it really is about helping people and serving, which is, which is awesome. So are things um, with the pandemic opening or things are, opening up post pandemic, hopefully it's, you know, it's different in different parts of the country, but are we going to start seeing, and I know that I'm going to be able to go see my own grandma for the first time in forever. Like I, you know, just, it, it's crazy. And it's, it's been so, it's been such a tough year. Like what's, what's kind of the mood for, for all these different um, locations? Like how are people kind of looking forward to getting back or like what's going on? Chefs are pretty excited right now. Our dining rooms are, our dining rooms and restaurants are, are starting to open up, which is great. I mean, if you can imagine, and I know when we spoke in the past, right in the middle of the pandemic, it was conversations around takeout and pickup and getting creative and being innovative around, you know, those sorts of solutions. But now that dining rooms are opening back up, 
you know, I guess back to my previous point of just the creativity and the innovation around food and senior living, sh chefs are getting back into that groove of yes. creating, having fun and, 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 you know, having residents and guests in the dining room mm -hmm. uh, versus the massive sort of takeout and pick up. I know. I think at, from talking to different people, it seems like some of those conveniences like mobile ordering and, and takeout and that kind of stuff will stay with us. But I, and I think it's good news for our whole industry that people are at least not yet. Like we're not robots yet. Like we're not going to, there's no replacement for gathering in a community and eating together. So that that's gotta be good news <laughs> for, for all of us for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so on that note, on that note of positivity, I, I will end this interview, but um, you are one of our chefs to watch. And that means that we'll literally be watching you, not in a creepy way, but we're going to keep up with you and see what you're doing, you know, just yeah, this coming summer and beyond, like, let's absolutely stay in touch. And thank you so much for everything that you're doing. And thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me, Tara. Thank you.